mama told me when I was young. Come sit beside me, yeah, my only son. Well, listen closely. Yeah. Hey, y'all! Welcome to another episode of Leonard Skinner Shorts. This is episode 12, which feels like we just recorded episode 11. Possibly. Because we just did. <laughs> um, but once we get in a row, we get in a row. Today, we're going to stay in the Van Zandt family, but not necessarily all Leonard Skinner. Because one of the thoughts that we want to do is we kind of want to share the Van Zandt family Southern music scrapbook with all of y'all. Uh, remember, if you remember earlier, it's a book that I bought from Lacey Van Zandt. 25 years ago, um, and he autographed it. So y'all can't buy this book anymore. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're going to talk about today chapter three, which is labeled Donnie Van Zant. And we all do love Donnie Van Zant and the music he made at 38 Special, but let's just hear a little bit from his father about Donnie Van Zant. So Joe, let's just open it up. Chapter three. Oh, there's a picture of Donnie, age eight. Um, wow. That's a good-looking kid, right? He looks like you <laughs> at age eight. <laughs> he does look like me a little bit, so maybe. Well. <laughs> so we turn the page. It's a picture of 38 Special. This is, what year would you say that is? It's probably early 80s. Probably early 80s. It's the original band. Um... Which Lacey says, you know, through pure determination, they've made their dreams come true. The next page, we have a picture of St. Luke's Medical Center, which is where Donnie was born June 11, 1952. Donald Newton Van Zant was the name that they chose in honor of Lacey's father. And so they called him Donnie. Um, turn to the next page. There's a picture of Donnie walking on the beach. I have no idea. This must be why he's in 38 Special. Uh, anyway, it says that he started off at first grade at Ramona Elementary School. Um, he was a good student, and he became a school crossing guard. Isn't that interesting? Donnie, way to go <laughs> you. Um, Stillwood Junior High, where he liked history and was on the track and baseball teams. Um, and it was during that time he was became interested in music. And he started his first band called the Collegiates. He went on to start another band called the Standard Productions. And at the age of 14, he was actually earning money between two and three hundred dollars a month playing music at local Navy bases. And you know Jacksonville is full of Navy bases. Yeah. What do you think about that picture, Joe? That's a senior senior picture. Graduation. So here's the story. This is great. This is worth this is worth the book. So he attended Robert E. Lee High School. And the only problem he had in high school was he kept getting suspended for having long hair. And that wasn't really a problem because he went out and bought a short hair wig and actually wore it to graduation, fooling everybody. <laughs> That's a funny look. That's a picture of him with his short hair wig. <laughs> now, is that not great? Ingenious. Oh, my God. So, anyway, the next picture is a page a picture of Donnie in 1996. And it just says that he worked various jobs, you know, including... Uh, making eyeglasses for Bosch alone, right? But every night he practiced with a band. And he moved out when he was 18. Here's a picture of Donnie and Larry Junstrom oh, promoting Big Joe's Beef Jerky in 1996. Never even heard of Big Joe's Beef Jerky. Yes. Um, he can still remember the first song Donnie wrote along with Jeff Carlisi and Don Barnes. He called it Country Man and wrote the words on a paper bag that he carried his lunch in. Wow. Far away from Ronnie's memory bank. Well, here's a cool picture of the next page. Ronnie and Donnie, 1975. Um, wow. That's a, that's a very cool picture. That's a good one. Ronnie and Donnie. Um, so the next page is a picture of Donnie with Ronnie's daughter, Melody. So prior to 38, Donnie played in so many bands that would break up. He wondered should he stay in music, but he loved it, and he needed a but he needed a secure, a steady job. Um, he'd been offered jobs with railroad companies, but with Leonard Skinner touring, 
uh, Donnie came to Ronnie and, and Lacey asked for advice. And they said, hang in there. Don't stop trying to reach your goal. And here's a picture of 38 Special at a filled Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Wow. Really? 38 Special filled up Bush Stadium? That's kind of cool. Um, anyway, he just talks about when 38 Special did get together, they made a demo tape. And Ronnie gave it to Peter Rudge, who was their manager. So Peter then invited Donnie, Jeff Khaleesi, and Don Barnes to New York and became their manager. And before long, Peter Rudge was instrumental in them signing a record contract with a &M Records. And of course, you know, the rest is history. Um, as far as 38 Special goes, here's a picture of Don, Donnie and Ashley. Um, she's a nurse in Jacksonville. Donnie has... There's, well, look at the whole family at the, Donnie's wedding. That's really cool. Huh? We're having a hard time turning the page. There's Donnie and Ashley, and there's Colby, Donnie and Ashley's grandson. And here's the picture Donnie and Ashley with Lacey and Marion. That's the family photo right there. Pretty cool. And can, as anywhere, everywhere else through this book, Lacey just talks about how much he loves his kids and his family. And I think that when we talk about whether it's Donnie or Johnny or certainly Ronnie, that love of family and devotion to the, you know, the kinfolk is always there. And I think you really hear it in all their songs, too. The family structure, very sound, very solid. Yeah, and... and we're going to talk about this later on, but when you think about some of the songs that are just a little bit more, I don't know, emotional, I think Ronnie nails all those things. Think about I Never Dreamed, which is my favorite, one of my favorite songs off the last record. Just, it's just, I don't know, kind of get a spine tingling feeling because Ronnie, it's just who he is, right? He, he they say he's a country boy or whatever, but he's a real man. You know, he has emotions and feelings and you know, opinions that he's never afraid to share, which his father Lacey, obviously the same way, and that's where he gets a lot of it from. Um, if you ever get a chance to get this book, uh, you should, because it's just full of really, really cool stuff, the Lacey Van Zandt book. Uh, anything else to talk about, Joe? I think so. Other than we love Donnie Van Zandt. We love Donnie. You, you may know Donnie has some hearing issues, and he doesn't tour with 38 Special anymore, even though Don Barnes and the boys, they're still out touring very religiously. But... The Don, Don Barnes Band. Don Barnes Band. But Donnie did have some ear issues, so I'm not sure what the status is on that, but that's pretty much wrapped up his career, I think. Yeah, it's too bad that uh, he never got to write with, with his brother Ronnie because the stuff that he contributed to Johnny was, was awesome. and it, it seemed like he had a lyrical touch that was, you know, maybe as good as his brother in some respects. A little touch, just, just a little touch of Ronnie in there. And, again, it's from the family, and... Their sound, sound family, would love for you know their parents and their and their siblings. So a lot of love invested in that writing. Yeah, and that's what's that's one thing that attracts us all to Leonard Skinner is just that uh, how they make it feel so personal for everything. So anyway, Joe, good job, <laughs> Donny Van Zandt. <laughs> it's a quick one. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. Till next time, y'all be cool.